Hey everyone, and welcome back to week five of Influencer. Over the last several weeks, we've explored some incredible individuals who have shaped history and our faith through their influence. Today, we delve into a different dimension of influence, the power of the crowd. You see, the crowd has a way of shaping our choices, beliefs, and actions, sometimes for the better and other times for the worse. I remember a time when I was in high school, I used to go sell football programs for Texas Tech football games. My friends and I would go to the stadium several hours before a game and sell the programs. And when we had sold all of our programs, we got to go into a game and try to find an empty seat where no one was sitting and could spend the rest of the night watching football or goofing off, if I'm really honest. I remember that one night there was a game that was particularly crowded and we were leaving the stadium after the game and I was going up a set of bleachers towards the main concourse. I thought that I was following my group of friends out of the stadium, except it wasn't my friends. I had literally gotten mixed up with the wrong crowd and I didn't even notice it until the group of people I was following went out the wrong exit on the complete opposite side of the stadium. The wrong crowd had led me to the wrong place, while my friends, the crowd I should have been with, were wondering, what happened to Joel? In the New Testament, there's a story that beautifully illustrates the idea of the crowd and the impact it can have. It's a story of a man who was paralyzed, but sought healing from Jesus. We find this story in Mark 2, and when we read about it, we read about a crowded house where Jesus was teaching. And there were four friends of the paralyzed man who were determined to get their friend to Jesus. Verse one tells us that when Jesus returned to Capernaum, several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. What a remarkable scene. The influence of those friends and their faith and determination led to the paralyzed man being forgiven of his sins. It was the kind of influence that brought someone closer to Jesus. But it wasn't just that Jesus forgave the man of his sins. When challenged, Jesus looked at the man and said, get up and take your mat. And the man stood up and he was healed. You know, the crowd can have all kinds of influence, positive and negative. There was a negative crowd that was trying to keep the man from getting to Jesus. But there was a smaller crowd, a group of four men who made a difference in the paralyzed man's life. The New Testament tells us the story about another crowd influenced by negative forces, a crowd that demanded something tragic. In Matthew 27, we see a crowd swayed by the religious leaders demanding the release of the notorious criminal Barabbas and for the crucifixion of Jesus. It says, but the leading priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. And that's exactly what the crowds did, demanding that Jesus be crucified. It's a stark reminder of how easily the crowd can lead us astray. Sometimes the influence of the crowd can push us towards decisions that go against our faith, against what is right and just. Even Pontius Pilate knew that it wasn't right to crucify Jesus, and he said he washed his hands of it. Scripture also tells us that we shouldn't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform us into a new person by changing the way that we think. So I want to challenge you today and ask you, what can we learn from these stories? 
I think that we're supposed to surround ourselves with crowds that influence us to be more like Christ, not to do things that we know aren't right. We should seek friends who lift us up or maybe lift us down like the paralyzed man, who encourage us to live lives of faith, love and compassion, to be more like Christ. Proverbs tells us that we should walk in the way of wise and become wise and that associating with fools will actually get us into trouble. When I followed the wrong crowd at the football game, I became lost, wondering what I needed to do and where I needed to turn to get back to where I wanted to be. As we navigate life's crowds, let's remember that in the influence we carry and the influence that we allow in. May we choose to be influencers for Jesus, drawing others to his love and grace. Because as much as we need a positive crowd influencing our lives, we also have the opportunity to be a positive crowd for someone else. Hey, spend time today in your group discussing the impact of the crowd in your life. Thank you so much for joining us for Influencer Week 5. We look forward to seeing you next time.